Hello again, Jose Rodriguez here. In this video, I'm going to be covering what I would do to bring back to life an old neglected printer, such as this little Epson R340 that I picked up at a flea market for practically nothing. As you can see, it's been neglected. You can see all the dust that's actually that's under the glass cover of the LCD little screen. You can tell this has been sitting in bad conditions. So I turned it on initially, tried to do a nozzle check, and it's clogged. Not terribly clogged, but ne nevertheless it's clogged. Now I am in my shop, as you can see. It's a very large machine shop. But I brought the printer here because I have better lighting than in my print room. And so let me go ahead and show you the interior of this printer. As you can see, it's operating with some really cheap, apparently, um, refillable, not, not even, these are compatible cards probably from China. There's a little bit of dust and dirt on the Peyton sponge. This hasn't been cleaned in God knows how many uh, years. You can see the sponge on the far left is very dirty now this is not as bad as I've seen there's some yellow ink and some grease there and all sorts of uh, possible problems what I will do is I'll turn this on I'll go ahead and print a nozzle check and see where we are but what I will cover is the steps that I take to attempt to revive printers such as these now I have been successful with the Stylus Pro 2200. I have actually bought three of those and you know that they were totally neglected and brought them back to life and are currently in my print room right as I speak. You can see how dirty the cover is. There's some looks like magenta ink residue there. Another really funny thing is rather than install an external a proper external bottle the user installed an external waste ink pouch. That looks to me like one of those food pouches for babies. However, it works. I will be, of course, swapping it for a proper bottle if I get this printer working correctly. So, let's go ahead and crank this baby up. See where we are. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Okay. Everything seems to be moving correctly. And depending on how the nozzle check looks, I will go ahead and run a cleaning cycle and then retest if needed. Now the beauty of this type of printer and, and the, I believe the R40 and the R60 and R80 each had a nice LCD color screen. And this came in really handy. It actually prints very good photos. I have another one of these and I use it in my wife's office uh, for her to use. I have it installed up there in her room. I am in my cave downstairs. And actually this printer does do a very good job printing uh, regular photographs on glossy paper. It uses a six color ink system, CMYK, light magenta, light cyan. And it also has the ability to take memory cards so you can print directly from them. Look at the dust in there. Wow. And you have to realize that I am a stickler for printer cleanliness. I really uh, agonize over that. And that's why all 16 of my printers are working perfectly year after year. All right, so let's go ahead and do the print, so-called test print. I'm going to hit setup. 
let's check the ink levels. I forgot to do that before. Sorry about that. I said over here. And oh, and we're low on black. We're getting very low on the other five colors. Well, we may not be able to even do a uh, cleaning cycle. Let's go ahead and do the nozzle check and see where we are. One of the things that often fails, oh, stupid me, how about putting some paper in the paper feeder? That should, that should help a lot, huh? Lovely. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we got. We got missing nozzles galore. Very hard to see. Let me turn down the exposure on the camera itself. You can see we have a full magenta, practically missing probably 90% of the light magenta, 90% of the yellow, 90% of all both cyans in about probably 20 to 25 percent of the black so yeah we have a problem Houston but we should be able to get this um, running perfectly as long as nothing is wrong mechanically with it I shouldn't have a problem so I'm gonna go over very quickly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna of course go ahead and probably um, install a fresh set of cartridges simply so that I have enough to perform a cleaning cycle and if that works if that by itself um, clears up those clogs then I'm good to go so if it does not then I will resort to doing the traditional soak over paper towels soaked with um, say Windex I'll leave that there sitting for a few hours and then retest if that does not do the trick, then we will um, do the more invasive method, which involves removing the carts and injecting cleaning fluid into the ink stems directly into the print head. Now, that's an operation that needs to be done very carefully and only as a last resort, because you could delaminate the print head components if you apply too much pressure, especially if you have a channel that's totally blocked. So you got to be careful. Now. Once we get everything running, hopefully, all the nozzles are firing 100%, then I'll go ahead and do an alignment. And if that works perfectly, in other words, if I don't have any strange gaps on the aligning uh, little blocks that the printer will print, then I'm good to go. If I do experience some little weird gaps, in other words, there'll be like little blank spaces in the actual little blocks that means I have to clean the encoding strip and the encoding strip is located right here and that is this little mylar strip right here it is loaded via two lateral springs one at that end and one at this end and it sits there very very tight let me open up the exposure and what happens is the head itself the head assembly has a sensor and that strip passes through that sensor now what makes that strip so special that little strip of mylar has microscopic vertical lines engraved on it either photographically I'm not sure how they how they achieve that but they're like micron in width and so that acts as a locating device for the print head 
so that the printhead, as it senses those little lines across that strip, it knows what position it is located in this axis. It's rather ingenious. All of the printers have it, regardless of uh, whether they're you know forty dollars or three thousand dollars or or more. They all rely on that. That is how the head is able to locate itself. If for example, if you were to have a uh, crash of the head, so you have a piece of paper blocking the path and you hear the uh, gears kind of grinding and everything comes to a halt, you know, remove the obstruction, restart the printer, and that little encoding strip will allow the head to sort of regain its, its location. In other words, it'll know where it's at to put it in layman's terms. It's, it's quite an ingenious uh, bit of engineering. Actually, pretty amazing if you ask me. Okay, so that would be only required if, like I said, if when I try to realign the head, I see some weird patterns that are not part of the uh, realignment uh, procedure. Okay, so that would be uh, one thing that you could actually do as part of your regular maintenance. Uh, if, imagine, if you will, you're printing a lot of borderless images, and borderless causes a lot of, a lot of internal overspray, and these cheap printers do not have vacuum spray aspirators like the $1,000 and up models do. So all of that, cl that cloud of overspray sort of goes into the sponges, but some of it could actually fall and accumulate on this little mylar strip and if that mylar strip gets dirty then those little lines cannot be detected by the head so as part of the maintenance procedure you could you could take a q-tip with some alcohol and very gently wipe both sides of it the rear surface and also the front surface now to achieve that you have to start up the uh, printer you start it up and as the print head is moving around you unplug it and that way it will allow you to move the print head manually to whatever position. So you would do this length of the strip, then move the head over to the left and end cleaning the uh, remaining portion of it. And that's uh, one very important thing that a lot of people will not even know about when they try to perform maintenance on the printers. Now as you can see when I did the nozzle check the printer fed the paper perfectly well so I assume my rollers are okay but if they were not if I was getting uh, paper rejects in other words I was getting a rejected paper feed I don't know if you can see that that's very dark let me get my light on here that should be a little better you see those little white roller like things down there and over to the far right almost hidden is a rubber roller and that roller is what first grips the paper and feeds it into your feeder mechanism. If that roller gets a little bit scale or slippery or dirty, full of paper dust and such, it will not properly grip the paper and it needs to be cleaned. And the way to do that is with alcohol and a Q-tip or you can soak a piece of paper halfway and then have it fed through the printer and the wet alcohol soaked paper will pick up any dirt and any uh, particles that may have contaminated the surface of the rollers. And that's one quick way to clean your rollers. A lot of feeding problems can be cured by simply doing that. Now there are products specifically made for that and you can obtain those from some of the third-party ink providers. And look what I found right there in the little corner, a dead bug. <laughs> Amazing. We'll take care of all of that. Okay, one more thing. You see all of those little rollers right there? That's the platen. Okay? And those rollers need to be cleaned. Now the sponge, basically what it does is captures overspray. And what is overspray? As I said earlier, is the when you print borderless, you have to print beyond the edges of the paper so that you get a nice, clean, borderless result. Otherwise, you may have little white you know slivers or slight borders so you have to the, the printer driver what it does is over enlarges the image and so the printer has to print 
outside the paper, maybe as much as 5% beyond the paper. Well, that is caught by the sponge. So basically, the ink that it is spraying lands on the sponge. And if you do a nothing but borderless printing, you're going to make the sponge, I mean, filthy. So what you do is you dribble Windex or other cleaning fluid and then dab it. And basically, I just use paper towels. Now, some printers, specifically this one and any of the R series, the lower grade R series, like the two from the 200, the 300, I'm not sure if the 1900 has it. They have this secondary sponge on the far left. Now, that sponge acts to pick to sort of collect excess ink that might be dribbling literally out of the printhead as it's traveling across and it will get very very dirty how to clean it again very simple you just dribble some windex and blot now later on when i get into more specifics again when i set up the printhead so i can manually move it you will see the area where the uh, docking station is and that's a very important area as that is where the printhead will sit when it is off and it seals itself around a gasket now there's a lot of pros and cons and a lot of argument between people as to what is best whether to leave the printer on or turn it off after use if you turn it off after use it's going to park over that print head perch pad or perch unit. It has a nice rectangular gasket around it and that's gonna seal the surface of that print head. But anyway, once that is moved out of the way, we'll be able to see that and how you clean that is simple. You just dribble some Windex on it and dab it. Being very careful not to, not to detach it because it's a very easy to detach uh, piece of hardware. Now, right next to it, another very important item is the head wiper blade. And that wiper blade is actually sits itself out of the way. It tucks itself out of the way when you're not using it. It's hard to see because it's actually tucked away. So anyway, and it comes into play every, every dozen or so cycles of the print head. And it basically wipes the bottom of the print head or the surface of the print head. Again, to collect any excess ink that's you know collects when you're spraying ink onto your prints. That's another one that gets very gunky, and you have to just basically flip it on the up position manually and wipe it carefully with a Q-tip soaked with cleaning fluid. All right, before I go, I'm going to go ahead and do that head cleaning. Hopefully, I'll have enough ink left to even finish it. If not then I will have to get a new set of cards and come back. But in case if it does work, then I will end this video now and I'll come back when we proceed to do the you know sub subsequent steps. And I will go ahead and do maintenance that I may or may not need to perform just so that you know what you should be doing to restore a printer such as this uh, older neglected one. Hopefully everything will be fine. Let's go ahead and do the uh, head clean. Let's go ahead and do a nozzle check and see if we're okay. And if not, we'll do another one. Apparently it was able to do the... Uh, we'll see where we are at and we're still lacking so we'll go ahead and do another one so let's go ahead and do another head clean this should give you a nice uh, view of what's happening underneath here There is the, oh, you saw a glimpse of the purge unit. I'll give you a better shot of this when I do, uh, when I set it to be able to move the head out of the way. Hopefully we'll be good to go this time. Recycle a piece of paper, so I don't waste paper. And we see 
I'm going to compare the previous and also check with the new one. Ah, we're doing a heck of a lot better. This looks promising, folks. Okay, now you should not do more than three cleaning cycles in a row. Um, it's just simply not recommended that you do that. So this will be my last cleaning cycle. If we do not clean it up completely, I will go ahead and uh, just send an image and have it print. And then I'll follow that with a uh, cleaning cycle if needed. I will do, what I'll do is after I print the image from my, say like a USB stick or an SD card, I'll go ahead and print an image and then check the resulting nozzle check at that point and always comparing it with the previous one to see if there's improvements within it. Once we get it all printing correctly, then we'll go ahead and do the manual head alignment. These are not very um, long cleaning cycles. These are not like some of the ones from other photo printers, which kind of take minutes and waste a lot of ink. So that's one good thing about this particular model. All right, we're still bad. Okay, I think you can see where we are. So I'm going to end the video here and when I come back on the next video number two we should be able to take care of this. I simply do not have enough ink to be running more cleaning cycles. So we'll go ahead and end it here. I'll get a new set of cards and come back and uh, we'll get this sorted out. So as always thank you for watching. Please leave comments, questions, whatever you want to discuss. Share my videos if you find them interesting. Please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. So until then, happy printing. Bye-bye.